new Bible, it's kind of like having a new hairdo or new shoes. Uh, sometimes they don't always do what you want them to, but uh, the words are all the same. And in fact, it's exactly the same as my last Bible, but just bigger. See, everything's on the same pages and everything, so that's, that's a real blessing. Um, I wanted to t- speak to you this evening about praying for our missionaries. Um, I, I w- I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit embarrassed Sunday that I hadn't been as concerned about their son's accident as, as I would have been if it had been my son. <laughs> um, and I got the letters out, and sure enough, there it is. <laughs> I couldn't say I hadn't, uh, we hadn't gotten a, a letter. And, uh, you know, one of the things that you commonly hear in missionary letters is, please pray for us. You know, pray about this, pray about this. And I think sometimes because we hear it so much and so many different things, that sometimes it kind of becomes a little bit, uh, you know, we don't pay as much attention as we should. Uh, I've been, you, you know, quite moved by Brother Surrett's not injuries, but uh, illnesses and, and treatments and so on, and, and have been, uh, I felt like, f- pretty faithful in, in, in prayer uh, for him. And it, it's, it, it's easy to overlook some things, but I want to encourage us tonight to be uh, praying for our missionaries and, and, and praying for each other, for, for that matter. As I, you know, as I looked at all these different letters, it's quite a variety of missionaries we support. You know, the Evans in Japan, you know, the difficulty of there, um, the Paneros in, in Vanuatu, and, uh, you know, what a different situation that they have. They've been supporting the Crows and uh, the Surrettes there in Mauritius and the, the illnesses that they've, they've been facing. But the, the common denominator is that as Christians, we're, we're kind of the one that's out of step with everybody else. You know, no matter where we are in the world, everybody's going this way. It's like that picture. You ever seen that picture where all the fish are going this way and there's one fish going that way? We're, we're that fish. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the world is a difficult place for Christians in the sense that we're going the, the narrow way. And uh, we need to be uh, uh, consciously uh, praying for our missionaries because they've, they've taken it a step further. They've stepped out of their own culture uh, to another one. And uh, we, uh, we really need to be, to be uh, praying for them. I thought we'd start in Ephesians chapter 6. I'll just mention some of the earlier verses. Uh, verse 10, when he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And then verse 13, he, he says, uh, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. And then down in, in verse 17, he, he, uh, I don't know why I've, I'd never had thought of this before, but it, verse 17 and 18 are part of the same sentence, and he links the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and prayer. I thought uh, that, that's an interesting uh, combination that he, he puts there. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and prayer. Now, let, let me read it, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And Paul asks them, like every missionary does, pray for me, pray for me. And he, he lists some specific things there. I'm sure uh, Paul could have listed a lot of specific things physically, but his, his request was for his ministry and uh, for his, uh, his witness. We're, we're probably aware of most of the things about prayer in general. You know, we're, we're aware that we, we don't pray to people. Even when we meet together and pray, uh, we're not praying for mainly for each other's benefits. We're, we're praying to the Lord. Uh, in uh, you know, Matthew chapter 6, how, how he talks about... Um, you know, not being hypocritical in our prayers. Um, let me read a little bit of that. Matthew 6, verses 5 and, and 6. He talks about the, the hypocrites that love to pray standing in the synagogues that they may be seen of men. 
You know, that, that's not why we pray. And, and when we pray together, try to get past the fact that you're praying with other people uh, and, and just pray to the Lord. Now, we pray together for, for a biblical reason. It, it's a good thing. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, you know, and they, early church, they met together to pray. It's a good thing to pray with others. But there's a danger in that we can be so aware of the others that when we forget we're, we're praying to the Lord. The other thing he mentions there is vain repetition. Now, I, I think sometimes, even as Baptists, we, we have vain repetition. I, I know I do sometimes. Sometimes you'll catch yourself just saying something because that's what you say when you pray. And we need to be careful that it's not empty words. That word vain means empty or useless. Vain repetition. That, he says that's like the heathen. When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. And uh, it, it's not going to be by uh, our presentation, but it's, it's our faith, it's the Lord that's going to answer our prayers. In other places, he, in Luke, for instance, he talks about that we should ought always to pray and not to faint. And we should be consistent. Now, 1 Thessalonians 5, pray without ceasing. You have an attitude of prayer. And we know that we pray in Jesus' name. I've said to you before, you could, you could say, I, I pray this because I believe this is what Jesus would pray. And that's what in Jesus' name means. This, this is by his authority, and this is what we believe he would authorize us to be talking about. <laughs> uh, we know those things. But we need to sometimes just be a little bit reminded, don't we, as, as we come to prayer. When we think of praying for our missionaries, one of the things the Lord tells us, Luke chapter 10 and verse 2, is that we need to be praying for laborers. It's in several of the Gospels. Luke 10, verse 2 says, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So that's something, you know, that has to do with missions. It has to do with the work of God. We should be consciously praying that God would send laborers. Um, you know, as a church, uh, we're aware that at some point we're going to need somebody to take the pastor to this church. I, I know a lot of pastors my age or older. Man, we can drop off the perch any minute. <laughs> uh, I mean, if a wiggle can fall over while he's uh, wiggling, a preacher can fall over while he's preaching. And uh, it's, it's happened. Uh, we need to be praying for laborers. This is a prayer that you also sometimes can answer yourself. <laughs> now, be careful. I don't mean answer yourself. But, uh, uh, you know, when, when God says we need laborers, we can say, well, here am I, send me. And uh, what a blessing that is. Paul asked them to pray for him as a missionary that he would have boldness. That's a good thing to keep in mind. You, know, you, you think of missionaries, you think, well, they're missionaries. Of course they're bold. Well... Missionaries are just people, and they go through different things. And uh, Paul, you know, if anybody was bold, it was Paul, I would, you'd think. And yet he's saying, pray for me that I can open my mouth boldly. You've had it happen. I've had it happen where you, you think, you're talking to somebody, and you're thinking, maybe I should witness to them. And then the moment passes, and you don't say a thing. Uh, I'm sorry to say, I've, I've had that happen. And we need to have boldness. We need to have one of the other points later on is we need to be spirit-led. Uh, it's not that we have to always open our mouth, but we need to have uh, boldness to share the gospel with people. Uh, you know, for us in our church, we need that. Our, our missionaries need that. And then there's a, there's a verse in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 1. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 1. It says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Free course has to do with th that people would listen, that people would, would accept God's word. You know, you can, I mean, we, we put up the, the gospel on our sign out here. <laughs> we hand out tracts. You, you could blare the, the words of God on a loudspeaker, but people have to hear them and accept them. And that's something we can pray about for ourselves and, and for our missionaries, that people would hear and, and that it would be received. The next verse, 2 Thessalonians 3, 2, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. We need to pray for our missionaries' safety. Now, that's true for ourselves as well, for our church and, and for our own people, but uh, that, uh, that they would be safe from, from wicked people, and there are wicked people. Um, 
there, there's some specific things that I think that we need to keep in mind when we think of particularly praying for missionaries. Uh, I really appreciated the message Sunday morning that Brother Harrington brought. Uh, he used the illustration of holding the ropes, and, and uh, it was an excellent message. And that's, that's something we need to keep in mind. If you're holding the rope for somebody, you can't be goofing around. You know, oh, oops, oh, was I, I, I forgot I was holding the rope. Uh, the way I picture it, you know, there's, there's five preachers all holding this missionary's rope, and, and what are they going to do? They're going to start arguing with each other, aren't they? <laughs> and then one's going to stomp off and say, well, I'm not holding the rope with him. <laughs> Listen, we, we need to be persistent and regular in our prayers. If we're going to hold the rope, we need to hold the rope. Um, put it this way, we need to be as faithful in prayer as we expect our missionaries to be in being missionaries. We need to be faithful. And praying regularly, this is not something as a last resort. This is something where we pray from conviction. Luke 18, 1, I think it is, where he says, men ought always to pray and not to faint, not giving up. Uh, and like Paul wrote there in Ephesians uh, 6, 18, you find that again. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. How many times that word all in there? Quite a few. Uh, we need to pray regularly. And it needs to be from conviction, not from crisis. Now we pray about crisis, but uh, we need to be praying regularly, not just waiting until there's an emergency. Secondly, in Ephesians 6.18, he talks about praying in the spirit, supplication in the spirit. Now, I think part of that is that it's not vain repetition. You know, we, we don't read prayers. So it's like the old joke where the, the prisoners, everybody knew all the jokes, so they just numbered them, and, and God said, number four, oh, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, some of us, were like that with our prayers, you know, prayer number five, and, you know, prayer number six. And, uh, we don't want to just pray words, we want to pray in the Spirit. We want God's Spirit to be leading us and uh, sometimes, you know, the Lord will bring someone to your mind. Look on that as the Holy Spirit leading you to pray for them. Or maybe even contact them. It, it could be. But, you know, God will lay needs on your heart. God will lay individuals on your heart. Having said that, I think it's good to have a prayer list. Because uh, I don't know how you are, but I, I forget sometimes. And uh, there's people who need us, us praying for them. Pray regularly. Pray in the Spirit. In, in verse 19 of Ephesians 6, he said, and for me, pray specifically. You know, not just, well, Lord, bless the missionaries. Even when we're praying specifically for a person, it's, it's too easy just to make it so ge general, isn't it? You know, Lord, help the Paneros, and God bless the, the Evans. And, you know, uh, you know, we need to pray not only for them by name, but specific requests. And to keep in mind you know, what's going on in their lives. Even if you're not aware of things that are going on, the same things that go on in your lives go on in their lives. You know, just like we sometimes have financial difficulties or marriage difficulties or car difficulties. <laughs> if you own a car, you have car difficulties. Uh, you know, pray for them about those things. You know, or keep them safe as they drive. Help their kids as they're in school. Help their kids to love the ministry and not be put off of it. You know, there, there's just all kinds of things you can, that will come to your mind. And take some time for each missionary. I mean, we can't pray an hour necessarily for each missionary every day, but we can, we can take some time and we can be faithful in praying for them. Um, I might put it this way, pray anticipating their needs. In, in Ephesians 6, verse 21, he says, but that you also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known unto you all things, whom I've sent unto you for the same purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Um, there was things they didn't know that were going on in, in Paul's life. He said, I'm going to send somebody, he'll, he'll tell you. But, uh, you know, we can pray about these things that are, are regular in people's lives. I've shown this to you before. I can't remember where I got this now. Some other church had this. Uh, pray for your missionary. And it has a suggestion for each day, uh, their, relation, their own relationship with the Lord, their physical and emotional life, their family, uh, 
their ability to communicate, like Paul said, that I can share the gospel, their ministries, and, and so on. Uh, there's different things you could pray, out, pray about on different days. If you wanted a copy of that, I'd be happy to, to give that to you. Uh, you. Can you imagine having to share the gospel in a different language than you grew up with? That'd be tough. You know, I've, I've struggled with English. I, I am a professional communicator. You should hear the conversations that go on in our home. Uh, you know, between me and my wife, you know, we're, we're both professional communicators. And uh, yet it's hard to communicate in English, let alone some other language. Uh, relationships, you know, we, we've had some of our missionaries fail. Uh, you know, their, their marriage fall apart, their, their family fall apart. And I'm not saying we're to blame because we prayed or didn't pray, but we need to be praying about that. Uh, those are pressures that, that they face. Uh, doctrinal stability, their walk with the Lord. You know, missionaries ask, will you pray for us? And if we say yes, we need to do it. <laughs> At least pray for them right then. <laughs> and then you can say, oh, I've done it. No, that's not good enough, is it? Uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5.25, the, the words are, brethren, pray for us. That'd make a good memory verse, wouldn't it? Only four words. Brethren, pray for us. And not only do missionaries ask us to pray, God tells us to pray. He says in 1 Timothy 2.8, I will that men pray everywhere. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Philippians 4.6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God wants us to pray. And tonight, I'm just kind of homing in on this one main thing, is praying for missionaries. I think sometimes we're, we're a bit slack with it. Uh, will you pray? pray? Will you plan to pray? Get a, uh, get a system if, if that's what you need. Uh, you know, if you can have times during the day when uh, the Lord just prompts you to pray, well, well so much the better. But uh, uh, maybe you just need to set a time when you, you'll pray. Uh, you know, I, I think there's two main approaches to, to prayer. One is planned prayer, and the other is just we're, when he says pray without ceasing, that we're in constant communication with the Lord. I think it's like the difference between talking to your wife all during the day and saying, honey, I need to meet with you at five and we're going to talk. <laughs> and she might say, ooh, what are we going to talk about? But, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's conversation we have with the Lord all the time. But there's also other times when we, when we need to say, well, Lord, I'm, I'm going to meet with you at, in the morning. There's a verse that almost comes to mind about in the morning. Uh, maybe somebody else knows it. But we need to have our times with the Lord that we, we plan ahead. Now, I don't know that this applies to anyone here tonight, but in order to pray, you need to have access to the Lord. You need to be born again. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, so number one, make sure that you're saved. And then as a Christian, uh, spend that time. Uh, be in constant communication with the Lord. And uh, remember to pray for our missionaries. Now, you might need to start doing some research. That's a lot easier now than it ever used to be, isn't it? We can find out things. I, I needed to, I, I couldn't remember Brother Harrington's wife's name. So I Googled it. And I found it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> there are some Spanish church that, you know, a lot of them would just say the Harringsons. And they said, uh, James and Cindy Harrington. And I could read Spanish. I, God gave me the gift of Spanish in that name. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we can find out things to where we can, we can pray. And if nothing else, you know, write them and, and ask them or even read their prayer letters. That, that might help. Any comments or, or questions? How, maybe there's something the Lord has helped you, uh, a way that the Lord has helped you in this area that uh, could be of benefit to us. This applies not only to our missionaries, it applies to each other. You know, we're all going through things, and uh, what a blessing it is to know that somebody's praying for you and cares about you. We don't want to just ignore each other, you know? Being part of a church is not just everybody coming sitting in a chair. Uh, we need to have a, a love for the Lord and, and for each other, and that's going to come out in, in how we treat each other, how we pray for each other. And I encourage you to have a heart. You know, have a heart for other people, just like you'd like them to have a heart for you. I always remember as a, as a kid, 
one of the teachers, the second day, knew my name. And I thought, I, I like him. <laughs> because he, I don't know, he, he went out of his way to, to do that. And as Christians, we need to care about each other enough to, you know, pray for each other specifically and not just in, in general. All right, well, let's uh, go, brother.